<clears throat> Hi, it's Tom from WTFFF 3D Print Podcast and 3DStartPoint.com. And this is the third video in my series of getting to know the CEL Robux Dual 3D Printer. In the last video, we loaded filament into the printer and got it ready to print. And then I also, uh, in this video, want to talk about software, loading to my printer, and preparing a print. So, um, a little, another little, uh, you know, informed tip now that I've started using it. Uh, the printer comes with a flash drive which has its software on it. And uh, I put it in my computer to use it and I saw the software was there to install. And I proceeded to try to install it and it just didn't work uh, at all. I mean, I chose the right software, ran the setup program, and it, in the process of, I guess it said, unpacking the files, it just completely hung up and wouldn't do anything. Now that doesn't necessarily surprise me. Um, when a printer ships new, it ships with whatever the latest software is at that time. And I'm quite sure that in the time from when this printer was made and this, you know, and this particular, you know, flash drive card was um, created, the Windows operating system, in this case I was using my Windows laptop, the Windows operating system has been updated probably a number of different times and in order for the software to run properly it I'm sure needed to be the current software. So I just went to the CEL-Robox uh, website which is their URL and went to their, their support site and found the download for the software, downloaded it, and it installed right away with no problem. It's probably what it should have done in the first place, but I always like to experience the out-of-box experience that a consumer would have and try out different things. So, uh, I did install the software, and then once I connected the, um, the computer to the printer via USB, and of course plugged in and turned on the printer, the software immediately recognized the printer and everything was happy. So um, that worked well. And then I proceeded to load a model. Now of course this being a dual color printer, dual material printer, I'm printing two different PLA materials in my first print but I have a model that I created and that I've actually used in reviews of other uh, dual extrusion 3D printers. You'll remember some reviews if you're a longtime listener and uh, if you frequent 3dstarpoint.com you might remember a review of the Builder Duel which is uh, out of the Netherlands and I had several prints that I, uh, models I created to print on that printer and test the dual extrusion capabilities and I'm going to use some of those same prints as I test this and then I have a couple new ones that I've created since then that I, I can't wait to try as well so um, as you recall I had a lot of problems on those older printers with strings and hairs and purge towers and you know uh, what I forget what they call them sort of a a wipe screen, all sorts of things to try to get the material to end up where it's supposed to and I'm really excited to try this here. So I have loaded a model into the software, I have taken a few screenshots of that which you will see on a blog post at 3dstartpoint.com which will be there for the review of this CEL Robux Dual 3D printer and I invite you to please go to that and I'm going to share these screen shares, my models, so you can see some of the things I did. Uh, one of the things that I found quite easy is, so I had uh, STL files, actually two different STL files that were our one model that are made, designed to be printed together as one object. And I just loaded them up and the Automaker software, which is the name of the, of the software for the CEL Robux dual 3D printer, um, recognized that those two models were, you know, it, to occupy the same three-dimensional space and go together and loaded them right up. And I was very easily able to select one model and choose which material I wanted to print for that model and then same thing, click on the other color part, the other part of the mo separate model but it's part of the same thing and choose what material was supposed to be printed on it and then the software visually represents that shows you oh material one is here material two is here and then when I went to the print settings where I choose you know my layer thickness and 
you know, do I want a raft and do I want support and all that sort of stuff. Um, in, in the settings area, it actually colored the models what the actual material colors are that it knows from the chips that it read on the spools. Now, of course, if I start hardware hacking that and leaving chips in there for one PLA and feeding another PLA, then, you know, obviously um, that won't be accurate in the future, but at least for the, the intended user experience is actually quite good. I was impressed. So now it's time to send this first print to the printer. And of course it tells me I can't do that until I close the door. So it knows the door is open. So closing the door and then an alert on my screen just went away. And there's a button here that says make. So I'm just pushing make and it's going ahead and slicing I think it's simultaneously slicing the part and heating up the bed. This printer does have a heated bed. That's something else I think it's very important to know. It's not just a dual color printer. It is a dual material printer. So you can print two different materials on this printer and you know that even require different temperatures. Uh, right now, I mean, I, I really generally just print, print PLA anyway. Uh, because I print in an interior office environment that I, I don't want fumes of ABS and things like that. So I am um, happy with PLA and I'll be thrilled with just, you know, two color or, you know, one color and support material that's, you know, maybe dissolvable or easily, can you break away easily more than other materials might, things like that. So um, it's going ahead and heating up the bed and it's going to start printing. And I guess that's where I'm going to leave this video. I will come back and show you another one with the results of the print and the process of removing it from this 3D printer. How is that experience? And of course, I'll report if it, if it performed well and the, and the print went well. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this third video in the series on the CEL Robox Dual 3D Printer. I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.